Hello, everybody. This is Alfonso speaking from CXO Cockpit. Welcome to today's customer expert webinar. Effective reporting at one of our customers, BSN Medical. So thank you for joining today. Um, let me take you through an introduction. So who are the speakers today? I introduce myself. I'm Alfonso. I'm responsible for customers and new business across the UK, Ireland and Nordics region. And I'm going to be the host for today's session. I'm proud to introduce Frank Janssen from BSN Medical, um, based in Germany. And he is the Group Reporting Systems Manager. And he's going to be sharing with you a case study um, on uh, BSN's own use of CXO Cockpit. So today's agenda, it's a 45 minute webcast um, i would like to encourage all of you to use the questions box that's on your panel when you joined today's session at any stage you can submit those questions they will come to me directly and as you can see right at the end of today's session we will play back some of those questions and we'll get those answered either by myself from a cxo general perspective or whether they're directly aimed at um, Frank, and hopefully Frank will be able to answer some of those questions too. So there are two aspects to the session. One is I'm just going to set the scene in terms of the typical financial reporting challenge that we see in the marketplace, um, and just helps frame the challenge a little bit clearer. And then secondly, I will introduce and hand over to Frank, who will take you through um, the case study of uh, BSN Medical, an introduction to their environment. And uh, Frank is going to give you um, a demonstration of their solution. So you will see live in action CXO at a real company, which is really a breath of fresh air uh, from a user's perspective and a viewer's perspective. So very quickly, a couple of slides, the traditional EPM reporting process EPM enterprise performance management when thinking about doing month-end reporting if we just focus on that for a moment typically data is stored in a planning system or maybe an ERP system or multiple source systems it's then extracted into either the world of Excel um, or some transformation takes place generally by IT um, it arrives into an Excel spreadsheet um, it's very manual in its creation and then sent out to the recipients. Those recipients are receiving potentially a static stack of paper, potentially a printed document. It could even be the original Excel spreadsheet. Um, in addition to that, there's also the challenges associated with the collection of commentary. But because having numbers, they mean nothing without um, context in terms of somebody explaining why a cost has increased by more than a 3% threshold, for example. And only humans can add some context to explain what's going on in their business with, uh, with that regard. So typically the problems and associated with, um, with, um, Sorry, there's just a little bit of noise on the on the uh, microphone. I was just checking to see whether it was from my side. The problems associated with uh, EPM reporting, um, very disconnected from the underlying source systems. Um, so typically, if you have multiple sources of data bringing information in to month-end reporting, which is the latest set of data, at what point do you have that cut off? Um, then, of course, there's the reliance on IT, so needing to ask IT on a regular basis to, um, to actually um, produce that information for you. As described previously, potentially very static. So if you, as a manager, are receiving a report, it could be that you can't drill into it. It could be printed on a sheet of paper. Um, if you only have a view which is of a group view and you wish to understand the detail lower down, then of course that makes it very difficult. You may need to go back to the organizers who produced the reporting pack and ask them to reproduce it. 
essentially uncontrolled. So what do we mean by that? Well, we've seen many times that um, organizations have management meetings and they tend to spend time arguing about which particular report is the correct report, which number is the correct number. There's no single version of the truth and that is because the process for collecting the data and doing the manipulation of the information prior to the report pack creation means that there are multiple spreadsheets in the organization so arguing about which is the right version is sometimes a challenge when really the challenge should be focused on we've got the right information, we, we have the right narrative, we now need to take decisions about enhancing the performance of our business. So it's not helpful. And finally, this whole process is very inefficient. So we want to be able to speed this process up um, you may be spending many, many hours producing reporting packs, checking to make sure that the errors are clean, um, no errors within the solution itself. So typically, um, data comes from multiple data sources. Um, within CXO Cockpit, we can bring in data from multiple data sources. So one of the clear advantage, advantages straight away of CXO Cockpit is its ability to bring in that data. Some of the leading systems in, are named on the left-hand side. But in addition to that, CXO can actually bring in Excel-based spreadsheets too. You might want to think about um, CSR um, as part of that uh, process of collecting of additional non-financial data too. So finally, the, um, what we want to do in CXO Cockpit is empower the finance function through better digital reporting, three key values to consider uh, um, as a benefit of CXO Cockpit is a direct connectivity to those underlying financial systems. Um, the automated creation of reporting packs using CXO Cockpit and fundamentally um, a very clear ability to enter and create commentary and to be able to roll it up from the lowest level within the actual um, uh, hierarchy of your individual business. So to move on now, I'd like to bring to life uh, some of the challenges that we talked about and some of the solutions that CXO offer. And to do that, I'd like to introduce you to a customer case study. As introduced earlier, BSN Medical, a short overview to the organization I know that Frank in a couple of moments will expand on this, but just to sort of set the scene in terms of who and what BSN Medical actually delivers. Um, it's a world leader in wound care, uh, related vascular diseases, um, non-invasive products, and they produce some of these items listed here. Um, BSN Medical um, was recently acquired by SET AB, and um, that's just a very recent acquisition, and that's changed the organization fundamentally. And again, Frank will pick up that in, in a few moments. But what's interesting is the total number of employees is quite extensive. The revenue is quite incredible for an organization of its size. And the headquarters has moved to Stockholm in Sweden. And finally, my presenter that I'm going to hand over to now. So this is Frank, uh, Frank Janssen. He's the Group Reporting Systems Manager um, for BSN Medical based in Germany. And um, he has um, in excess of 15 years experience in finance and BI systems, as you can see here. So a particular expertise in Oracle Hyperion planning, Oracle Hyperion financial management, a building financial reports and SBA. So very detailed knowledge of the Oracle stack. Um, and more recently, three years experience utilizing our solution, CXO Cockpit, from implementation, integration with the um, Oracle solutions and producing a reporting process for BSN Medical. So I'm going to hand over to Frank. Um, I as I do that, I would just like to just remind everybody to use your chat functionality. Any questions that you have for me, any questions you have for Frank, um, please enter them into the chat box and, um, uh, and I will um, pick up those questions at the end of the webinar. So Frank, I've handed over 
control to yourself so can you share your screen and before i disappear let's just make sure that we're all visible and working so thank you alfonso um yeah um alfonso introduced myself a little bit um and uh, i would like to welcome you as well um to this webinar um my agenda is uh, to give you a uh, little bit more detailed um, overview about BSN Medical. Um, I show you our uh, aspects, our requirements on our reporting at BSN Medical. Um, of course, I will show you a CXO cockpit demo. Um, the demo um, application is not our live application um, because we are not allowed to show you um, our numbers, of course. Uh, but I give you a very good detailed demo, I think, um, about our application, and it's very, very similar to to the live one. Um, and last but not least, um, you have the chance to ask your questions, um, and uh, of course, Alfonso can give me um, further questions uh, after the uh, webinar as well, and I try to answer them as good as I can. Good. So, um, as uh, Alfonso introduced and uh, described, um, BSM Medical is a world-leading company in medical and therapy solutions. Um, there are two big um, business units. Um, the first one on the left-hand side is uh, wound care and vascular, and the other one is orthopedics. Um, our brands in this uh, area is on one hand uh, Loico, Cutimate, and Jobst, um, and we are specialists for for wound care, advanced wound care and compression uh, products. Um, I will show you, or I give you an idea about our products on the, left, uh, on the next slide as well. In uh, the area of orthopedics, um, there are two big brands. First, for the immobilization, um, that's Delta, and for the remobilization, it's ActiMove. And as you can see here, um, it's the whole integrated therapy solution uh, line that we offer to the market and to the products, uh, to the to the patients. Sorry, um, and uh, so that means uh, from the moment that you have an injury. Um, until the remobilization of, for example, your leg, um, you can find all the products that you need for this. This is uh, an example of our products. So if you are um, in the doctor's house, um, I think you will see different products um, of our company, like uh, Leukomate on the left-hand side, um, Hansa Plast, very famous in Germany. Um, Leuco Plast in different colors, different uh, sizes, as well as Cutimate. Um, we have our plasters, cover plast um, products, um, as well as uh, this kind of uh, compression therapy products from Jobst, um, very strong in the US as well, and Radiant which is very famous in France. So it's not BSN Medical as brand, it's still Radiant um, because it's, it's very famous in France. Um, then we have uh, Gypsona orthopedic products um, or these kind of uh, uh, Leuco tape products, but as well as for the remobil uh, as for the um, immobilization, we have a uh, remobilization products like Tricodor or ActiMove. So if you're doing sports, if you are doing sports and um, maybe have you an injury when you play handball or football, uh, this will help you, of course, to remobilize your, um, yeah, your your leg. So this is uh, an example of our products. Um, in 2016, uh, we made 850 million euro. Um, in different regions, very strong in the EMEA region, more than half of our, our sales have been made there. Um, about 30% um, in North and Latin America and 
14% in Asia Pacific. From a therapeutic area point of view, um, there is two thirds of the sales that we made in wound care and vascular, um, and uh, one third with orthopedics products. If we take a look on the sales by channel, you can see that we are very strong in hospital and the hospital uh, channel as far uh, as good as uh, in, in the pharmacy. So that more than 60%. Um, then we got the sanitary shops, different in, in, in regions. In some regions, we have more than 16%, of course. Uh, in, in some regions are less. 6% um, is export sales. Um, we are, we are, or we were a very, very growing uh, company. So that means from 2012 to 2016, we increased our number of employees from 4,300 to 6,000. That means uh, we have acquired a few companies, um, and this um, is, is uh, yeah, one. Um, aspect of the growth, and the second is, of course, that we increased our sales um, also from from about uh, 600 to more than 800 um, million euros during that time. Uh, in 2017, um, 1st of April, um, we were acquired by um, SCA, which is a very, very large um, Swedish company, um, and SCA has been split their um, business to uh, two um, yeah, areas. One is the forest area, which is still SCA, and uh, another company has been built, which is called Essity. And our part, um, the healthcare area, has been moved to this or into this. Um, into this business. So that means um, ACT is now famous for hygiene and healthcare products. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, our medical products is one part of this, just for, for your information. Um, of course, our organization has been changed and will be changed during the next um, few months or also years. Um, and uh, what I show you today is what BSN Medical was before the change um, and still is, but I don't know exactly how we will move our financial transactions and everything um, into ACT. So um, let me just give you an idea how we use CXO in our reporting um, environment. Reporting is a part of, uh, of finance. At BSN, there is a corporate controlling, corporate accounting, group treasury, and group taxes requirements. Um, we do monthly reporting in our uh, group head office, um, including internal and external um, reporting. We offer standardized reports or reporting um, with our Oracle Hyperion products. Um, but we also uh, um, provide ad hoc reporting with our Excel add-ins. Um, we uh, do the, the system support in the finance area, and uh, one functional requirement, of course, is the flexibility for short-term creation of scenarios. So that means to, to calculate numbers with different exchange rates, um, calculate projects, and also do uh, short-term adjustments in the chart of accounts, for example, or in the organization structure, especially if you acquire uh, a different number of, of uh, companies. Um, you have to integrate this into the system, not only from a, um, from a company itself, but also in terms of reporting, uh, in terms of deadlines, in terms of training and everything. This has been done in the finance area. We differ um, 
or we, we separate the reporting, uh, which is IFRS reporting and what's management reporting. Therefore, we have used and we have implemented uh, since 2002 uh, two Hyperion systems, which is um, Hyperion planning for the management reporting and uh, financial management for the legal reporting. Um, CXO cockpit is just linked to the management reporting because this is something that we would like to um, emphasize um, in our management and uh, this is something for the management reporting um, and for monthly reporting um, which is really really um, important um, to deliver in numbers in a, in a certain way to get um, more information into the management and very quick information so uh, it's the management reporting is uh, uh, important for the steering of the company by using especially key performance indicators like sales, EBIT, cash flow, and product results. And it's very future orientated. Um, so not only actuals, but also forecast, budget, and five year um, strategic planning, um, as well as rolling 12 month forecast for, for cash flow reporting. Um, this, was a, this was a requirement, of course, of, of banks because uh, we were um, a private equity uh, owned company um, until uh, March of 2016. And the requirements in this case is of course, banks would like to know if you are uh, able to, to uh, pay all the interest back to the banks um, for the lended money. Um, so the reporting tools of the BSM Medical Group um, is on one hand Hyperion planning for man management reporting, financial management for the legal reporting. We use the uh, financial reporting tool of Hyperion for the standardized reports, in most cases PDF reports. And uh, we provide for the, for the controllers in the, in the companies um, SmartView for Office um, for the analysis of data um, for the data upload um, because we have not a harmonized um, ERP system landscape um, as in many many other companies as well so uh, the opportunity to to um, prevent from data entry by by keying in data is to upload data um, via Excel and the, uh, the controllers can do a ad hoc reporting as well and uh, this is a very strong tool in this case as well um, Another tool is uh, financial data management, also for data upload with a direct link to SAP or um, other third party um, solutions in this case. So what we did is, um, before I start with the demo, um, we had a, a group finance project um, and the goal was to, um, to look for a system um, which is enabling the users um, to show key figures, key performance indicators um, in the management and to the different functions. And uh, therefore, we decided to, um, to, to use CXO Cockpit. Um, they had a presentation in our company as well as other um, products as well and companies. And uh, so we, we uh, used uh, to check, sorry. So we decided to go to, uh, to CXL Cockpit. Um, and I would like to give you a demo of our application that we have, um, that we have uh, built up and created. Um, before I do this, um, I would like to show you for exa two, two examples how our reports look before and I will, I will show you how these reports look like in CXO and which additional uh, value these new charts and, and, and dashboards uh, can bring to you. So first of all, um, this is a standardized PDF report directly from Hyperion Reporting with uh, are based, the numbers are based and the structures are based on, on space and planning. Um, this report is very static 
they, it has a fixed structure of the accounts and uh, the periods on, of the numbers. Um, the only thing you can you can change here maybe is uh, the the unit or um, the, the the entity for which you show the numbers. Um, and this is something we have uh, transferred into um, CXO cockpit, and this was our first report, and it looks like this now. So um, this report has many, many information or more information than the static report as a PDF file has before. Before I show you or explain this more, um, I would like to show you the different parts of the of the screen. Um, so, on the, in the top or on the top, you can see the menu. Um, the menu can be um, set up by each company um, in the way the company like. So we did it with uh, different uh, uh, menu items here, for example, for sales, for profit and loss, for working capital, but also for different functions like operations or HR. Um, so, but you are very absolutely free to to build up your own menu here. The uh, administrator, and I'm uh, logged in with, as, with my administrator um, user ID, um, has this option here, uh, CXO designer. This option uh, brings the um, administrator uh, to the um, yeah to the opportunity to. Um, to create reports, um, set up the user uh, rights and uh, something like that. Um, the most important thing is the report itself, of course. Um, and we have uh, different um, options of reports or different um, opportunities. Um, if you click on one menu item, you can see the repository. Um, of uh, reports. So that means these reports have been created by us. And just with a click on, on a report, oops, sorry. With a click on the report, you can open the report. Yeah, and if you go back to the home screen, just click on home and you get back. Um, the report itself here has been created with, uh, with the basis of the PDF report, as I said, um, and you got different options here to, to expand the information in this, uh, in this report. For example, we have the opportunity to compare period numbers from actual with budget or also with prior year information. This is very easily to create and very, very helpful um, for the analysis. Um, we can so we can we can use the the interactive options here with, uh, for example, selecting a different line, third party sales, and you can see that the chart here automatically has been changed. So I do it again. Yeah, and the application is directly linked to F-Base. Uh, that means uh, if uh, we have uh, calculated um, the, the F-Base numbers in planning, um, this automatically will be reflected here in CXO. And uh, so there is not um, the case uh, that we have to copy something uh, or email something from one point to the other because one number has been changed. No, you just have to take a look into this uh, report and everything is uh, uh, real in life uh, number. So um, the interactivity is on one hand, if you click or if you select a line here that this will change, but if you go into the chart here uh, and you uh, click, for example, on this item here, you can see that the chart has been changed again. So that means one click on on this uh, um, on this here uh, means that you drill into the hierarchy of of space 
automatically. Yeah, and we can go another step into into Europe in this case. And here we are on the on the level zero, so that means this is the lowest level of our um, organization structure, and we can see the different information here um, directly. Yeah, and this is very very helpful, and you have many many information uh, more than in a in a um, yeah in a in a normal PDF file in a static PDF file. Um, if we take into the bunch of uh, take a look into the bunch of uh, reports that CXO offers, we can see um, that there is a, a big variety of this. Um, first of all, we can use uh, also these kind of hierarchy information with a with a kind of tree. Um, we can see rankings. Of products, for example, the top 15 or the bottom information, and this is also um, added with with many many more information here because, uh, of course, you can see the point of view settings here with a year, with a period, year to date or um, periodic uh, view on the numbers, uh, the different entities. But even if we if we leave this as it is. We have more options to see uh, more information. That means, on one hand, we can rank by actual, we can rank by budget, we can rank by variance, yeah, plus and positive, negative. Um, if we go back and see our actual numbers for third-party sales, um, we can click on the product group here. For example, wide area fixation, and you will see when I change the selection here that the area here, that means the last six months, will change as well. So that means for a controller or for a management point of view, you have a lot of information here um, to analyze the numbers, uh, the analyze the uh, third-party sales, for example, um, and uh, yeah, this brings you. A lot more um, information to to steer your business. Um, to give you an idea, what what CXO provides as well um, is, um, I would like to show you the narratives and and common commentary. Uh, um, yeah function of, of CXO cockpit because this is very important in, in uh, nowadays I think because uh, um, of course for, for comments of uh, the, the business development uh, each month you have to send Excel files you have to send emails words documents and everything uh, around in your company and uh, CXO can prevent from this because you can add not only numbers in these columns uh, you can add also comments and uh, I added one here. Um, and uh, as Alfonso mentioned uh, before, um, you can add and roll up information. That means, for example, um, for us, our organization has been structured by product companies. This is one subtotal of our organization structure. We have a lot of production companies. And we can add, for example, and comment into the Briarfield numbers here. Yeah, and there is on one hand you can add comments here in this case, and but you also can structure your comments um, into the um, POV comments. That means month-to-date results, year-to-date results, full-year forecast results, and follow-ups, for example. Um, if you are the controller for the production company, you can edit the comments and uh, I just write in test or um, actual uh, equals budget and year-to-date numbers actuals bigger budget numbers 
So the controller has uh, added the comments. The controller can save the comments, and they have been have been saved now for the entity prior field for August 2009. Um, if you are now the responsible person for the production companies in total, and we change back to the production companies, um, now we can see that we have a subsidiary comment in here. That means now the responsible person can see that the entity prior field, and it was last modified by, by me, um, with date and time print, and you can see all the comments that he made. Now, of course, the person here for the production companies, the responsible person, can add a, also a comment. And if you are the CXO, for example, you can see then the production company comment. Yeah, so it has been rolled up, and everyone can can add these comments um, for his responsible area, and uh, that means that you don't have to to add uh, or to send out any email uh, for this um, because the other person can see it directly in the system. Yeah, and this is uh, also very very good. If you would like to to uh, create a package of information. Um, to prepare a meeting, for example, you can use the, the storyboard um, option of CXO, which is also very, very powerful. In this case, you can add different reports to one storyboard. And this is like a movie. Um, you can play this um, directly in a meeting without any PowerPoint um, support or something like this. Um, you can have everything in in, uh, in the meeting. Um, you can send it um, by email um, out to the people so they can prepare everything before. Um, and uh, you can present it uh, directly from from CXO. Yeah, this is uh, so. This is also a very very powerful tool. Um, and. Uh, we use it with uh, for for different things, um, and you can see you can have just two or more than two um, reports here in this case. Um, I think I've got a few minutes. Uh, I just would like to give you an idea of the CXO designer. Of course, I could could uh, could present uh, many many more options and, and functions and everything, but give you, I would like to give you a taste of, uh, of this. Um, and you can see that we have different um, menus. Uh, in this menus, we have a lot of reports um, that you can open. You can see the recently open reports. Um, and if we go in one of these reports, just to show you how it looks like, You can see that um, a report is um, okay. There it is. Uh, has a different content. On one hand, the the rows, and on the other hand, the columns. And therefore, you can you can create different lists, uh, and you can combine these lists and use for different uh, reports um, and charts. Um, so that is a uh, it's a uh, yeah. It's like an um, a modular um, system, uh, and you can you can pick the different lists uh, for the report in, in the way you like. Yeah. So uh, in the beginning, it's it's very important to to create the right lists, uh, and afterwards it's easier for you to to use um, the different lists for a report. Um, you can see the user management uh, as well. Um, as the user group management, so everything can be, um, uh, yeah, can be can be um, limited from from an access point of view, um, and uh, you can use a different um, security setting than you use, for example, in your pre system. Um, this is also a very good option in CXO um, to to use the system. And uh, I think uh, Alfonso um, 
I would give you back the um, the screen. Um, yes, hi, hi Frank. I'm I'm still here. Thank you. Yeah. Let me just connect back and then let's have a look at um, some. Uh, let's see if there are any questions that have come in from the audience. Yeah. And uh, just tell so me, Frank. I hope that you... Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah. So uh, I hope that uh, that there was a, that I can give you a taste of the of the um, functionality of CXO cockpit. Um, if you have questions. Um, of course, I'm I'm ready to to answer them, and uh, yeah, Alfonso, um, I would uh, um, turn okay. it back to you. Okay, Frank. So I'm just looking questions. down the questions now, mm -hmm. and um, thank you very much for that um, presentation and the d demonstration of your system, Frank. So. I'd just like to first of all um, position that thank you. I have a couple of questions that have come through from the audience today. Now, the first okay. one, you stated that you have a Hyperion financial reporting from Oracle. Why did you choose CXO over this and not enhance this solution further? Um, because uh, the um, Oracle solution um, has been, well, is limited in this case. Um, and the other um, BI tool that Oracle provides was uh, for us too big, full of maintenance work. Um, and um, we are very, um, uh, yeah, we have very few resources in the reporting area. So we needed to, to be quick in the uh, implementation and we have to be uh, flexible in the, in the maintenance work of uh, CXO and, and uh, Hyperion as well. And uh, CXO provides a very, very good proof of concept in the beginning. Um, and we could learn very, very quickly how to um, create these reports on our own. That was the main reason. Okay, super. Um, there's another question that's come through, Frank. Um, hmm? Before and after CXO, how many days did it take to produce your month end reporting packs? Oh, good question. Um, we had uh, different um, scenarios and different management reporting um, packs that we had to deliver. Um, and we were, for, for the management reporting, um, um, and I have to, uh, have to add, um, our company, so our group, um, consists of more than um, 80 units. Um, so about um, 90, 95 units and about um, 70 uh, legal entities. So that means um, our reporting was, was, was a large reporting. Um, and first of all, uh, we collected the numbers uh, until the sixth day. And we sent out everything, uh, including consolidation um, uh, bookings and um, reporting packages and everything on the 10th. Yeah, now we um, have different due dates from ACT, Um and now we, we have to report on the fourth day. Um, and we do it partly with, uh, with CXO, um, and we are working on, on a solution um, to, to extend this kind of reporting. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Another question that's come in from the audience is, um, when you talked about the distribution of the reporting packs through the storyboard feature, um, somebody's asked a question which says, can you print these out? Yes. First of all, you can print the reports. And secondly, um, if you really need, for example, a PowerPoint um, sl uh, slide, uh, with information out of CXO cockpit, you can export uh, the report uh, directly into PowerPoint, into Excel, or into Word. So there are many, many options. Okay, thank you, Frank. Um, well, a question that's come in from the audience is saying that um, our organization has got many thousands of employees. Um, uh, you, 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 if I recall rightly, you, your organization has in excess of 50,000 employees. Um, yeah. ha, ha, what, do, 
obviously not everybody is using CXO cockpit, but you, you've yeah. got to the maximum number of users in terms of distribution. I'm just trying to give the audience a feel because the question's not very clear um, as oh. to um, at what level maybe it's used, um, is the scope for it uh, being used uh, more broadly, et cetera, just to make people feel as if comfortably yeah. they can use it across many different organizations. Yeah. So um, CXO Cockpit is an uh, executive dashboard and, and uh, yeah, chart system. So that means um, from a from an implementation point of view, I always recommend uh, to start um, on with a, with a small group um, of people um, and uh, to check. Um, the the content part because in the beginning um, it needs a lot of time to to check what would you like to show and um, therefore um, afterwards uh, it depends on the different functions and uh, on on the amount of people of course um, that you would like to uh, to be part of CXO yeah um, so okay. therefore it's a, it's an executive executive management tool and um, I think in the beginning. Um, if the the management um, is is using CXO with also the mobile function, which is very important for the management, I think that's a good start. And then you can go down function by function. Okay, we just we get we 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 probably should be finishing now, but there's a couple more questions uh -huh. coming in, Frank. So I'd just like okay. to try and grab these if that's possible. Um, and okay. one more is um, regarding management of an administration of reports. How flexible are they to customize them and change the information? Are they very static in their nature or do you have the flexibility to change the look and the feel and how you drill down, etc.? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They are very, very flexible. Um, first of all, uh, that what you can show in CXO is always depending on the on the pre system, uh, on the on the system, which are um, the basic of of, uh, of CXO, of course. So that means if you have a good um, structure in, in uh, Hyperion S-Base, for example, um, you can show everything that you like uh, in there. Um, and uh, there is a box of, of reports um, that you can use. Um, so they are uh, easily to, to create. Um, if you need something very special, um, you have to have the option to, to create um, uh, yeah, free freestyle so so to say um without using the uh the the preformed um reports and um you can easily really uh, change it because we have to be, we had to do this very very often uh in the beginning of course uh and and nowadays as well um because we sometimes need a new reflection of of data different uh, comparison of scenarios and so on and so on Okay. Yes. I've got yeah, one. Fi I've got one final question, Frank, and then I think we should end the today's webinar, and which okay. is regarding the value um, of CXO to the users. How has it changed their working lives? Are there any quotes or any comments that you can recall um, in terms of the folks using your using CXO, your solution, compared to where they were before? How has it improved their working lives? Yeah, um, I think um, to be honest, in the beginning it was uh, not not uh, easy for to to get everyone into the boat um, because uh, a controller is working and uh, is used to work with with Excel, and to say oh you don't have to do it again uh, and you don't have to change it and you don't have to repeat that again, um, you can use it here. Uh, it's here. It's directly here, um, and to get this kind of a culture change into the heads, um, uh, that's, a, that's a big task in the beginning. But um, if, you, if you understand this kind of value that CXO brings, um, you can use that time for, uh, instead of creating Excel files, you can analyze numbers and you can uh, uh, bring, bring your project uh, to, the, to, the, to the aiming goal and, uh, and that's, that's the big value uh, CXO can bring. 
Fantastic. I think we should end today's webinar at this point. So uh, my name has been Alfonso. My contact details are on the screen. If you wish to ask any further questions and learn anything more about CXO Cockpit, I'd like to thank Frank uh, Janssen very much for taking the time out of his busy day to prese pre present, prepare and do a demonstration of BSN Medical's use of CXO. So thank you very much, Frank. Um, and to everybody else, goodbye.